Oh, like now. Okay. Hey, uh, it's Green Machine Comics. We're going to do our weekly wrap-up. i got to stop clapping because I'm sure we're picking that up. Oh, yeah. we got a nice new uh, mic. Uh, what is it? A green mic cover? Mic boom cover? We had a weird week, and we have to apologize to our subscribers because uh, something happened with our system, and all of our subscriber lists got messed up. So we're going to try and work it out and, and maybe get everything out. But if you're a sub and you're owed books this week, it might do you some good to give us a call and uh, ask. Because uh, we got shorted, too. We got shorted on Red Hood, which is painful. Yeah, that like, one hurt a lot. Red Hood is my favorite, my current favorite DC book, and uh, oh, I'm so mad about it. But okay. Yeah, good news is all the uncanny and Return of Wolverine. All the uncanny and Return of Wolverine are in. Except the list still said we were shorted uncanny. Yeah, so, should be able to go off the so weird. Anyways, so what we got going on this week, uh, let's see, Superman number seven, what happened to Superboy's Lost Years? Uh, Jonathan Kent is back, and he's all of 17. It's kind of shocking. Like, he's quite an age jump. Uh, yeah, so basically he, uh, his grandfather showed up with a spaceship and took him and Lois off. Lois stayed for a little bit, and then Lois took off, and there was problems. And it's not fully explained yet, but he's come back. He's 17. It's not kryptonite. It was the golden kryptonite, I think it is, that, like, ages them. Uh, yeah, it's not kryptonite. He's, like, legit 17, so they're jumping up on this. And Super Sons is still going on, so... <laughs> yeah, I, I guess Super Sons separate continuity or past continuity or maybe... The, I, don't, I don't know. But at any rate, Jonathan Kent has been jumped up to 17 years old for now. So, for now. You know, you never know. Um, we knew it was eventually going to happen, but I don't want to see him and Damien grow up just yet. Uh, next is Goddess Mode. Goddess Mode is, I hate to say it because I'm a huge Neil Gaiman fan and I love Sandman and all that other stuff, but I think Goddess Mode is the best thing coming off the Vertigo imprint right now. I'm for a right? <laughs> it's really weird to say that, that I think Gaiman's being beaten, but he's being beaten. Uh, this is amazing. Um, so this takes place in a sort of dystopian future where everybody is getting a weird disease and being put in like stasis pods. And then on top of that, there's like nanotechnology that's tied to some giant internet and the nanotechnology is implanted in you. So you like can interact with the internet and you can sort of see like ads and other stuff. Like it's, it's all types of weirdness. Uh, at the end of that, the first issue, the, the main character gets sucked into the internet itself and didn't know you could go there. And it turns out like there's magic and, and demons involved. And the people that survive the first fight with the demons become these things called oracles. And, and like there's a group of them. They're, they're called the, the tall poppies, I think. And so some of them, yeah, yeah, poppy. <laughs> uh, so some of them, um, basically they all have like a certain aspect that they're tied to like there's the oracle of i can't remember them all but it's like the oracle of empathy the oracle of i don't know knowledge or something else like that the oracle of uh, something else and the main character is the oracle of trash trash so that's messed up but uh nonetheless it's a pretty pretty darn good story and their powers are pretty much like like glitch powers so it looks cool and as a huge fan of glitch art like i like this sort of stuff and a huge fan of cyberpunk. Uh, so this is still a really great read. Great showing. Two books in and I'm hooked. Uh, I, I, I should say that you should go out and pick up Goddess Mode like right now. Like a top tier book. Um, next book coming out tomorrow. I need a drink real fast. I was super excited for this. Uh, this is Shredder in Hell. So if you don't know what's been happening with Shredder... Uh, Shredder got killed. Well, basically, he sacrificed himself. And he made amends with uh, Hamato Yoshi and the sons of Hamato Yoshi. And uh, he came to terms that the bad aspect of himself wasn't actually himself. It was, uh, he was possessed by the dragon, which is sort of the... Dang, this buzzing thing. <laughs> he was possessed by the dragon, which was the first foot, le foot clan leader, I guess. And he was hell-bent on making this prophecy come true. So he was tied to that. So the Shredder chose instead to sacrifice himself and give up that whole aspect of himself. And he died. And so Splinter shows up in, like, spirit form. But I don't think it's actually Splinter. I'm, I'm not fully sure. Because Splinter's still alive, yeah. technically. Uh, 
but Splinter, I mean, with all their meditation stuff, they can travel between world, worlds. So it's possible. But nonetheless, so he's there and he's trying to make him not choose uh, the path of the dragon because the dragon is still at odds with uh, Shredder and still like pulling him one way or another. And so Shredder says, you know, piss off to both of you. I'm going to go my own route and winds up in hell. And now he's just sort of fighting his way out of hell. And this is awesome because the Shredder has always been a really awesome villain. And he got redeemed after, God, how many years? 20, 30, 30 years? 30 something years. He got redeemed, and now he's fighting his way out of hell. And, uh, and God, what a cool, flawed character. I'm really, really intrigued. I want to see where this goes. Uh, what, what was really cool is if Shredder's in hell, what are some of the things he's going to see? Uh, well, he's going to see the fallen victims of, like, you know, all the people that he's killed. And then on top of that, he's, of course, going to see the turtles, but evil versions of the turtles who are goading him. So that's cool. Uh, Shredder in Hell's dope. Um, next is one I was super excited for, and I'm more excited for now. Uh, that's Black Widow number one. And there's a lot of things that they get this right, and, and some of it really hurts for me. It starts off, it's like New Year's Eve, and there's a New Year's Eve party, and Cap is working security. But Cap's been called there because there's a doppelganger of his sort of sowing descent. And it's, it's crappy. Like, let's be honest, it's crappy. Uh, I don't know that Cap is ever going to recover, and it kind of breaks my heart. But it's funny, but in a mean-spirited sort of way. So Cap's walking through the crowd, and people are like, uh, Oh, God, I got to get right what they say. They say, uh... Still hailing Hydra, Captain America. And then uh, another one says, like, you know, not my captain. And oh, it's so he brutal. Can't he can't get a break. <laughs> it's painful. And I don't, I don't know that he's ever going to recover. Like, they, they, they went way too far with that Secret Empire story. And I'm... I, yeah, he totally did. He, he, like, he called him Captain Hydra and then, like, beat the crap out of him. Eventually they won, but, but yeah, anyway, so, yeah, Cap, Cap gets crapped on all around right now, and I don't think his image is ever going to recover, at least not in the Marvel Universe, I mean, he's doing a little bit of outsourcing to Wakanda, yeah. um, but, and I don't know that his image is going to recover with comic fans either, like, I just get, I just feel dirty when I read them now, it's terrible, that hurt me, yeah. like, let's be honest, Secret Empire hurt me. It hasn't been right. And I don't think it's ever going to be right. Anyway, so, okay, we're talking about Black Widow, though. So, it opens with that, and Cap is basically her and Black Widow and Cap have to figure out who this this uh, doppelganger is. They have to figure out something about a robot army. And they can't, you know, the whole time Cap is reminding her, don't kill people, don't kill people, don't kill people. So, she finishes the mission. She doesn't kill anyone. It's very, very good writing here. I think the writing is the Sorska sisters, I think it is, but very good writing. Uh, what happens is she winds up going to uh, a place, a pretty rundown country, where she can kill people, and she can uh, get outlandish. And basically, she's going to find people who have been hurting children in this country. Uh, Madripoor. It's oh. Madripoor. So she's gone to Madripoor. Same place with uh, Wolverine. I, yep, yep, and they reference Wolverine, too, there. So, yeah, yeah it's pretty good. She's uh, So... It's a really, really good story. It's well-written. It sets the stage so that Black Widow can do what Black Widow does. Uh, it reads like her. I, I don't feel the writer struggled in getting across her personality in this. Uh, th these writers are awesome. Um, the Sorska sisters, I guess is what they're called. Uh, I didn't know enough about them. I actually went and looked them up. Uh, I don't know why I didn't know enough about them, but uh, they, they seem very interesting, and they're, they, they've struck gold with this. This is a good read. On top of that, the, the art in this book is outstanding. Like, I don't know, it, it's just, it's playful, it's fun, and, and it's, you know, a little gritty when it needs to be. I, I really like the art. Uh, so, yeah, Black Widow number one, I would say go pick this up. And if you come into our store and you find the one with the, uh, with the bent corner, it's the one I read, and that's a collector's item. <laughs> it's worth a fortune. One, one Brazilian dollars. I don't think Brazil has dollars. It's like the ducat or something. I don't know what it is. Oh, okay, next was Invaders. Invaders number one. I know some people were happy about this book, and they were excited about this book, and I was excited about this book. 
Uh, didn't have the best time with this book. It kind of sets the stage. It picks up where Avengers have left off, where, where, where uh, Namor the Submariner is uh, pretty angry and stage setting the stage to wage war. And he's got new powers. He's got powers comparable to uh, Mira in, in the DC Universe. So Aquakinesis? Okay. Water Kinesis? I, I, is that what you call it? Aquakinesis? Yeah. Aquakinesis? Um, so, yeah, it sets the stage for that. I'm sort of unsure about the art. The art is kind of cool, kind of weird. It hasn't really sold me. Uh, it feels like that Defenders books, those Defender books, where I was like, it's kind of cool, it's kind of not. I don't know what to make of it. What, what is cool is they're doing these flashback scenes, and it's like the art is different in the flashback scenes, and I'm kind of a fan of that. I think that's a cool effect. Um, so it's basically, it's Invader's business, so pretty much Cap, Winter Soldier, and Johnny Storm set out to sort of handle uh, Namor and maybe hopefully fix the situation or... Or pull him back into the invaders. Um, but the story is a little convoluted at times. It's not the best story. It's kind of setting a stage. It's sort of picking up with the Avengers. I, mm, I'm not really sold on it. Not yet. I got to read a couple more books maybe. But I did not have the best time with it. And I'm not sure what it was. It could be... May, maybe the writing was a little too confusing to me. Maybe not. Maybe... I don't know. The characters didn't really sell it to me either. The art really didn't sell it to me. It's weird. But it's a number one. So if you're an Invaders fan, go pick it up. If you're a, Mar uh, if you're a Marvel fan, you could probably have a good time with this. If you're a DC fan, it's wholly skippable. Mm, I hate talking that way. Um, next is Sonic the Hedgehog. And uh, I have not read any of the Sonic books. You were hesitant about touching it, but it's coming here by all the yeah. time. Not read any of the Sonic books, uh, it was interesting. Basically, it comes on the heels of, like, a big battle and Eggman's not quite being Eggman and there's Metal Sonic in play, you can tell on the cover. Um, it introduces a whole lot of characters and I knew there was a lot of Sonic characters and I think the internet made a lot of Sonic characters, too. There's all those bad Sonic characters. Have you seen these? Oh, man. People will make Sonic characters. They'll be like, Steve, the blah, 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 and it'll be, like, a yellow version of Sonic with, like, drawn poorly. I like, go look up your name. Take your name. If your name is Derek, do Derek the Sonic character. Do, do Steve the Sonic character. Do Frank the Sonic character. I guarantee you there's a billion of them. Like, the internet draws weird Sonic characters for some reason. Anyways, so there's a billion Sonic characters in this. It was kind of interesting. Uh, I, I've played a lot of the Sonic games, so I knew a lot of the characters by default. Like, there's Knuckles and Amy and stuff like that. Uh, didn't quite know what was going on, but it was fun. It was like... It was like reading a Saturday morning cartoon, which is kind of how I would think this should be, right? Yeah. So if you're a kid, you'll probably have a good time with this. If you like Sonic, you'll have a good time with this. If you like video game reads, I think you would have a good time with this. So uh, that was my first uh, foray into the Sonic comics, and I didn't have a bad time. Yeah. Next is Justice League Dark, and it says, Who dares defy the other kind? Uh, and it's got Man Bat. And the other kind, I think, is like the really dark sort of gothic -y creatures, uh, I believe. Don't quote me on that. I can't remember. But um, so what's really good about this book is it's broken up like a horror comic, like a legit horror comic. And like, yeah, like Crypt Keeper, the Vault of Horror, like the old witch type yeah. stuff. And on top of that, uh, Man Bat is is uh, pretty much acting as the Crypt Keeper. He's, like, introducing the characters. He sort of, like, drops the... Even even when they drop, like, the name of what's going on, like, they're like, The Soup. It's sort of written like the old ones. Or, or uh, The Conjoined. Like, it's it's written like the old horror comics. And I had a really good time. With, and there's a reason for it. And I'm not going to spoil it, but something reappears. Something dark that's sort of been coming back and forth and then no 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 <laughs> but i can't spoil it um yeah it was a really good read I, I had a good time with it but i'm a fan of those old horror comics so i like stuff like this uh i wouldn't say it's for everyone if you don't like the dark gothic spooky kind of horror comic stuff uh you could probably skip this but if that's your cup of tea or if justice league dark is your cup of tea you're gonna have a good time with this and plus Something really spooky is at the end of it. Something is still in play. Uh, Fantasmagoria fans. Yeah. Fans. 
all that kind of stuff. Grim, Grim Tales of Terror, uh, all the old like 70s horror comics, all that stuff is good stuff here. Uh, so next we're going to talk about Fantastic Four and it says The Herald of Doom Part 1. So obviously Victor Von Doom is in play here. Okay. Um, this story also involves Galactus. Uh, it involves uh, Doom trying to save the planet from Galactus and save the planet, uh, not, not just save Latvia, but the planet itself. And what's really cool is like the Fantastic Four go into Latvia to sort of take on Doom and, and deal with Galactus. And they get there and they find like another Latvian hero that is like working for Doom. And all of Latvia loves him, you know, and they, they, they love him there. And, and so it's cool, like, like the Fantastic Four are pretty much the bad guys there. And meanwhile, the other good guy is, is, is Doctor Doom. And he might very well be the good guy. It's weird to say, like things play out sort of strange in this one. Uh, I had a good time with it. It's a good showing. Uh, Fantastic Four, I'm not sure why it's not more popular right now, but it's it's written really well. The art's really well. Everybody knows and loves the Fantastic Four, but people don't go out and buy it for some reason. People are still traumatized that movie. Yeah, yeah maybe. The, not just that movie. I think it was more than one movie. Like, Galactus is like a space... What was he? A cloud? Like a cloud. Because clouds are scary. Woo! Uh, <laughs> clouds. Next is Outpost Zero. I read Outpost Zero recently. I read that trade paperback that summed up like five issues. And this is issue number six. So it's picking up after that. Outpost Zero is basically an outpost on the edge of the universe on an ice planet. And they went to go colonize a different planet, but something happened, so they settled down on the ice planet. And in the outpost, they have, like, a decent environment, and they have, like, a sun that rises and a sun that sets. But it's not a real sun because they're on an ice planet. And, you know, uh, they're safe in there, but they've got to sort of fight for survival. And people, and it's turned into sort of this caste society where people get placed in certain areas depending on, like, what they qualify for. And, and so there's a great mystery into, like, one of the kids goes out, out of the dome and kills himself. They're trying to figure out why that happened. Um, yeah, yeah, there's all types of weirdness going on. And this book pretty much picks up where it left off. And it's more or less talking about one of the characters. It's centering around one of the characters who's, who's got a really sort of rough uh, outer look on life. Outlook on life. Yeah, not outer look. I'm saying that because it's Outpost Zero. Getting my outs out. <laughs> uh, anyways, so it centers around that character, and it sort of explains how and why he's kind of a bully. And, uh, and you know, the mystery behind Outpost Zero is cool. The art is cool. I wouldn't say the story is the strongest story, but I liked it enough, and I felt it was safe enough that I brought the trade home to my stepdaughter and was like, yo, go read this. It's pretty good. It's you know, about a girl who's living in the, the edge of the universe on an outpost on an ice planet. So it's a good story. I think it's good for kids, or tweens at least, and uh, I think you should go pick it up. The art is what really sold me on it. I like the art for some reason. It's that image skybound. The image has been killing it lately. Okay, the next book we're going to talk about is uh, one that we were both looking forward to quite a bit. Batman Who Laughs. <laughs> Batman Who Laughs. So, if you don't know what happened, I'm going to catch you up on the first issue, and I'm going to try not to spoil too much of the second issue. So, the Batman Who Laughs is free and active in the DC Universe, and Batman basically goes to... He keeps happening upon dead Bruce Wayne's. Other versions of Bruce Wayne's. And then on top of that, Batman Who Laughs comes into play. Um, the Grim Knight is in play, and Grim Knight is another Batman who... Basically, the way it was explained is when Joe Chill shot his parents and then dropped the gun in the alley... Uh, the Grim Knight was the Bruce Wayne who picked up the gun. And wow. And everything about Wayne Enterprises after that point was weaponized in the most messed up of ways. And it explains why he is, he is legitimately the Punisher of Batman. Pretty, pretty much. He's... Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of stuff touched on in this book. Um, basically, they're trying to figure out the mystery. I think last time, at the end of the last book, Batman was infected with the Joker toxin. And so they're sort of grappling with that. I don't want to explain too much about that. But the Joker toxin is released from the Joker in his heart when he dies. And he died in the last book. So, 
right in front of Batman. So Batman got infected and sort of picking up from there. I don't want to spoil too much, but I will say something that is very interesting. Um, in this book... Uh, the Batman Who Laughs explains to Bruce Wayne, because there's just so many dead Bruce Waynes that have been appearing. They were appearing in the last book. I can talk about it. Um, but they all had better lives than him. So he explains that you are the Nightmare Knight, which is a really cool name, right? You are the one that suffers the most out of all the Bruce Waynes in existence. Interesting. Wow. Okay. Batman is the Nightmare Knight. Well, yeah, I'm liking these the, the places they're taking this stuff. But, you know, it's Snyder. It's not to be unexpected. Uh, next, we're going to talk about... Well, let's talk about... ID. Oh, no, no, no. Before we do that, let's talk about something else. We, we need to talk about something okay. else here. Okay. Uh, let me find it real fast, if I can find it. Where be this advertisement? I hope it's in here. And that I'm not just like... Hunting for for it in a book that it's not. Let's grab a different. Oh, oh, here it is. I found it. I found it. So this is a tie-in to Heroes in Crisis that we need to talk about. Now, if you look at this cover, it says, "What is it? The price?" And we know that Batman and Flash in Heroes in Crisis had disagreed on who the killer was. One said Harley, and the other one said Booster Gold, right? And so they were going to go investigate it. But these are the two of the best detectives in the DC Universe. So if they get stumped, like, there's a problem. But there's a lot of stuff going on here. Now, we, we talked about how the, the mask in right. Heroes in Crisis, which is right here, uh, looks a lot like Psycho Pirate. And Psycho Pirate has been in place since the beginning of uh, Tom King's run, right? And he's, he's probably the reason everything got messed up. Because he messed up two characters that were essentially going to be Batman's retirement. Gotham and Gotham Girl, right? Mm -hmm. And so Gotham wound up dying. And, yeah, like, went, went way nuts because of what Psycho Pirate did to him. And, and uh, Gotham Girl, uh, Batman fixed her. But there was always a hint that Gotham Girl was going to do something really drastic to Batman down the line. They said it in, like, I think the second book of Tom King's run. And lo and behold, who is that shadow right there? That is a shaved, shaved head, a dress and a cape. That's Gotham Girl. Wow. So, and, and they keep, like, that's the Heroes in Crisis, like, the, the mask that people wore in the common areas there. But I said from the beginning, I was like, that looks just like Psycho Pirate's mask. And the story centers around PTSD, and it's referencing emotion, and all of that is coming into play. I love this stuff. So, oh, it's so good. Okay, um, let's get back to our reviews. Uh, next, we're going to talk about Ghostbusters IDW 2020, which it turns out it's IDW's, what, 20th anniversary. Yay, IDW, 20 years. Except Ghost Corps says 35 on the back. Is Ghostbusters 35 years old? Oh, wow. That's wild. I didn't know that. Um, okay, so this book centers around the Sanctum of Slime, which, yeah, isn't that, that's a different game. So, yeah, that's the that's, latest game. Yeah, it's that, that was that top-down game, right? Yeah. I didn't like that one not very much. One, not the cool one. Yeah, I didn't like that very much. Oh, but no, the latest game is the uh, Ghostbusters World, right? Where you go hunting ghosts? No. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the, you're right. You're right. The, uh, <coughs> the app for the phone. Yeah. Okay, so this was the game before that. But uh, so it centers around that. The, the regular Ghostbusters are all kind of aged. I don't like the way they're drawing Venkman. He looks really sort of haggard. Uh, I think it is. And that's Ray. I might have them confused. They both look really gross. I don't like the way they're drawing Egon either. Like, Egon looks like a complete lunatic with these dot eyes and his glasses. <laughs> like, it's like a Roger Rabbit with a... With <laughs> the Roger Rabbit villain? <laughs> what was it he said? He, like, had a, like, a high-pitched voice. He's like... Ee! Oh, uh, yeah, I can't remember, but, that, yeah, that's what he looks like. He looks like the judge. Uh, it's, I, I don't know that I like the way they're going with this art right here, but it's the Sanctum of Slime story. They're sort of dealing with a ghost and some fallout, and I come to find out that one of those characters that, that's like the Sanctum of Slime characters, one of them is related to Vigo, the Carpathian. He is Vigo. No, not really. <laughs> 
they just sort of reference it for like one tiny little bit. Uh, I didn't like this book. I love Ghostbusters. I love Ghostbusters, and I've I've liked some of the comics. Did not have a good time with this book, and I can't. I don't care about the Sanctum of Slime characters. I don't care. I, I hated that game. They should have dropped it. Uh, whatever. I guess New Angle. Go, go somewhere. You know, you, it, it's a double-edged sword. You gotta be different to to you know keep people interested. At the same time, if you're too different and too weird, the other fans feel alienated, and that's how I feel. So whatever. Okay, next. Conan the Barbarian. So this is the second book in the new Conan story. The last one, he was dealing with sort of a blood cult that was trying to harvest his blood specifically to like summon a big demon, and they got him in the end of it. Uh, so this picks up not where that left off. This picks up with Conan sort of navigating between these two kingdoms. He goes to fight this one kingdom, stumbles into a sea of, of not a sea, uh, a nest of snakes, I guess. What do you call a group of snakes? Uh, 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 what do they call a group of cobras? A quiver. A quiver of cobras. Well, he stumbles, stumbles into a quiver of snakes. And uh, they're giant snakes, he, giant ghost snakes. And he winds up killing a bunch of them. And he becomes a hero for the other side that he was hired to take out. And then he goes back across the river and hangs out with the other side. And they're like, oh, Conan killed the entire time. I killed all those people. I'm sure he killed them all. And he's like, meh. Man, he's like just drinking. He's like, just I'm gonna peace out of here. Like these people are gonna be mad at me. So it was kind of funny, but the tie into it is that it's it's sort of in his past and it has ties to the current stuff that's been going on and uh, like it leads up to that and they sort of show that it's leading up to that. So it was it was a good read. I had a good time. I wouldn't say it's the best read. It's not really necessary because uh, it's going to pick up where it left off probably last time. Uh, this is just a little backstory that isn't quite as important. So still had a pretty good time with it, though. So next, we're going to go on to our last book of the week. And the last book is Detective Comics, number 996. That means what? We're two months, two months away from 1,000? Four books, right? And it's a bi-weekly. Oh, yeah, bi yeah, so we're one, two, three, four, two months away from 1,000. So get ready, get ready, go out. Everybody needs to go out and buy Detective Comics number 1,000. If everybody in America buys Detective Comics number 1,000, we will have to hear that you've got Detective Comics 1,000 and not the death of Superman. <laughs> it's an exercise in torture at this point. Um... Oh, man. So, so we're yeah, anyway, so we're, we're counting down to 1,000. This is Detective Comics. Um, so basically, this comes on the heel after, uh, heels of Alfred sort of getting attacked. Mm -hmm. And Damien shows up and helps uh, Batman. And there's this, like, new monster. And the monster is made of, of proto-flesh. And it's sprouting heads of all of Batman's villains. And it keeps screaming, the bats, the bats. And so... Yeah, yeah, and I can't spoil too, too much of it, but, well, I could spoil a little bit. Basically, they're undoing people that have helped make Batman who he is. So that's a pretty messed up concept, and it's a pretty, pretty dark villain, and I think it's building towards 1,000, and I'm anxious to see where it goes. That doesn't mean that I think that this is necessarily the best story to jump in on. I think you should probably maybe jump in a book or two back. But it was still a pretty good book. If you're a Detective Comics fan or a DC Comics fan, you know, probably go out and grab this. Uh, if for nothing else, because it's building up to the big one, oh, 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 oh. So, yeah. Good read. Do you think we will ever see comics reach the thousand mark again? Or do you think that once Detective Comics reaches that crest, that they're going to reset it eventually? What do you think? Do they? they? I don't think they do. Really? I think it's quite the opposite. I think the numbers that publishers love are one, because one sells books. Mm. So I think they love resets. They love hard resets. They love soft resets. And I think that we will never again see 1,000. Not in, just in our lifetime. I think ever with comics. 
Yeah. Right? They do. They don't want to jump in, and they and they don't sell as well. Like, so I I honestly think that once this gets over one thousand, that they're gonna wind up resetting both DC and Action Comics. I think it's gonna happen. Yeah, I think it's it's legitimately gonna happen, and it bothers me. Like it, you can't really cite numbers and and reference things when they've been reset. What? How many times has Marvel and DC been reset in the last few years? Like I don't know. New Fifty Two rebirth. Yeah, it's just. And and then there was a, uh, God. What was the what was the continuity event in Marvel that like united the Ultimate and, uh, oh I can't remember. It started with a C too, um, but anyways. Where's Carl when you need him? That's true. Uh, so I don't think we're ever gonna see those numbers again. So I think that you should rush out and buy that Detective Comics one thousand. Um, it's sad. It's sad. Somebody needs to talk to uh, comic publishers and tell them they need to stop doing this. Like, I don't know, man. Like, do a soft reset. Maybe keep the numbers, but change the banner across the top. Make it, instead of Rebirth, something else. Because that banner sh certainly pushed books, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. That Rebirth banner is totally pushed books. And I, I, you know what else I, I've noticed is kind of uh, the, uh, oh, my God, where is it at? The uh, Stan Lee banners push book, push books. I think it's just banners in general. You put a nice little banner across the top, people want to get it. Like even the the Stan Lee Memoriam book, Bowen's push books. So, what? Oh yeah, those variants are nice, but they they don't necessarily sell as well. But they they sell better than the Marvel variants for sure, right? So, I think I think they should keep the numbers. Or if they're gonna reset a universe, maybe reset it. Do it like a version, like a 1.11111, whatever. So you keep the main number there, and maybe you change the, the one point or the point one or something, make it point two or something, so that you can jump in on that universe, you can jump in on that, like, sort of re, re, uh, that sort of rebirth point, or not that rebirth, but uh, reset point. You can jump in on it, but you keep the main numbers going, and then you can reference something different. Like, why not? Do version history numbers. Man, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to believe that they're going to reset De Detective and Action Comics, but I honestly think... I mean, like, I don't want to believe it, but I think they're going to. So, anyways, ah, that's us rambling. Yeah. That's us rambling. So that's all of our books from this week. we got to go and figure out our uh, insane sub-issues, and uh, we'll see you next week.